Hello, and welcome to this Creating Analytics and WKO series. This is Lesson 5, Creating a Data Series in a Workout. Okay, picking up off of Lessons 1 through 4, where we're basically just showing you the kind of settings and configuration of a charts, I'm going to actually do these next two lessons as demonstrations. So let's jump over to WKL4. Here I have a simple, easy, one-hour kind of ride workout selected. I'm going to close down the left-hand panel just so we get a little more screen size for our demo. Um, now, when we go to build a new chart, we need to build a chart in a dashboard. And all your dashboards are typically listed up here. Um, I want to be able to build a chart in whiteboards. So part of the reason we gave uh, pretty much all the views a whiteboard is that you have a place to build a chart, you know, or to build charts and experiment with things. If you don't see whiteboard on your list here because of your screen size, you can simply click the down arrow, right? And it would be listed here, you know, uh, on the drop down. All right, so I select my whiteboard. And if you notice, there's nothing in here. That's because it's a whiteboard, right? So how do we start building chart? Well, first, let's just click the little down arrow next to the word whiteboard here. And we can see I have the option of adding an existing chart or creating a new one. I'm going to select create a new one. And I have lots of options of chart types here, but I'm going to choose to do a custom chart. So once I select that, you'll notice a chart opens and the configuration box. I'm going to close the configuration box for a moment. I'm going to take my chart and I'm going to drag it full screen for this demo so that we watch it. Um, we can see everything a little bit better. I can also always double click on it and zoom it in, but I want to work on it within the dashboard for this demo. Now to access my configuration box, I go to the down arrow to the right and I'm going to open that configuration box. I'm going to drag it up here so I can work but still see some things happening. So now what I want to do is I want to name my new chart and I'm going to name this video test. Now I have a name and I could add tags and stuff like that, things that we've already shown you to do. I'm going to leave them both in zoom and overlap and I'm going to leave it be a chart for now. Um, I'm going to leave the layout direction vertical and font size normal, no smoothing. Now one of the things that I recommend when you get into chart building, if it might make it a little easier for you, is to first build things as a report. If you build them as a report and you're only, see, only seeing numbers, sometimes it's a little easier. But today I'm going to demo building a chart. Now that I have my chart setting, I need a data series. I need something, right? I'm going to chart something. So right down here, your typical data series, this is your information box and data series are listed in here along with your X and Y access information. Since we don't have anything selected, it's pretty blank. But if I hit this little plus, I get a new data series and now it's going to give me some Y and X access, uh, access options. Sorry. <laughs> so now that I have my new data series, I'm going to name it, right? I'm going to do, I'm just going to pick something really simple. I'm going to do a power data series. It's going to have to do with power. I'm going to choose, do I want area, gauge? I'm going to choose line. I'm going to let it be solid. Um, let's do medium just so you can visually see it better. And at this stage, I don't need any symbols. Because it's power, I'm going to select color. And I can select this palette, the center palette in Mac, that you cannot do this in PC. And if you look, we have a WKL5 palette in there. So I'm going to find power, and I'm going to select the power color. That's pretty much my background settings for power. Now let's begin to experiment. I'm actually going to move this off a little more to the side so you can watch. In the expression box, expressions are something that are, uh, we try to use the same verbiage as the naming, right? There's a couple of ways you can find help with expressions. If you go to help, you will find right here is expression guides. I'm going to go ahead and launch it so you can see it. It'll launch a browser and you have an, a whole list of all the expressions that are available. There are more that's on this list, but we actually created the language. So getting them all in here is really tough because it's a full language. <laughs> Another little secret, and this is something we're going to be starting to work on in the fourth quarter a lot more to help you out. You notice how expression lights up a little when I hover over it? If I click it, there's some options there. I can turn on and off syntax coloring, but look, 
there are some items already built in here. Some shortcut secrets maybe for how you get to things, how you find some information. I'm going to be building this out more and more to help chart writers. But right now we're going to work from scratch because I want to demo how it works. So based on the expression guide, I just looked it up, or based even on common sense, if I want power, I'm going to type the word power. Give it a second to calculate because it needs to know I stopped typing. And as you can see, it's brought up power in this example. So great. Now I have power, right? And that's nice and simple. I've got it named. I've got a line. I've got everything. I might want the line a little thinner and I might want it a little thicker. Up to you, whatever you see. I'm going to leave it on medium just for the demo sake, right? So now, you know, power was just one of the things I want to I wish I knew average power. So now I'm going to hit this little plus sign, get a new data series and name my data series average power. I also want it to be a line, but you know what? I don't want it to be solid. I want it to be dashed because it's not really showing me the data. It's showing me a summary of data. So I'm going to dash the line. I want it to be medium, right? Okay. I want it to be medium and I don't need any symbols, but you know what I'm going to do? I am going to make it the power color also. So now when I do this, right, and here's the secret to all expressions, I simply put, when you're building an expression, start at the core, the inside and work your way out. So at the core of what I want is power, right? But if I click power, oops, there's a typo in my name, huh? But if I click power, um, nothing seems to happen. That's because both the expressions are the same, right? It's just one line laid over another. But I want to tell it to do something, right? I want to tell it I need something at this point. So what I'm looking for is uh, I want to do, and I'm sorry, I've got some things running in the background. Um, I should have turned off. So I want to take power and I'm going to put it in parentheses. I'm going to make it the center of my expression. So, and you notice I was getting some messaging in there because I was going slow with it, right? So if once I have power as my core and center, then I just need to average it. So I'm going to add the expression average. AVG is the term I'm looking to do and then let it calculate. Now, as you can see, I have an average power line. And if you look at it, it's kind of flat. It looks like, I mean, this isn't a hard workout. It looks more like a rolling it around. So now I have two expressions. You know, what's funny though. I wish this yellow average power line had more pop. It was more in the front. So see this little arrow, I can select average power. I know there's a typo in there. <laughs> it's not a webinar without a typo from me. And I could make it top and you see it pops a little bit better. But now if you look up here, right? If I look at a, a power selection, average power says 157. Well, the reality is no matter where I hold that cursor, it's gonna say 157. So do I really need that in my legend? So once I build a data, series and expression of, you know, and create that data series. I like to decide pretty quickly. I don't like a junky legend, so I'm going to take it out. So now notice it's only, it's not showing up in the legend. It's only showing me my actual average power. Okay. So, um, let's say, uh, that has been created and I just want to do some fine tuning. I can change the X axis and the, Y or the Y axis and the X axis to be what I want. Obviously, since I've selected power, the system knows it's Watts typically, and the X axis is time. But let's say I wanted to create my own name for Watts. I wanted a different, um, you know, I wanted to separate the, the average power and the regular power. I might call average power. So I'm just clicking in there. I'm going to click Watt W1. I'm going to call it Watts 1. And when I do that, now it creates a second scale. I didn't tell it how to scale, right? It just has a number. But now if you notice, it's a little hard to see because this is the average power is the first listed data series. It puts that series on the left and it puts regular watts on the right. But you know, that doesn't make sense. I want them to be on the same scale. So I'm going to delete my one and go back and it bam puts them back on the same watt scale. You see the, you know, the watts are back here. 
So that's how ways you can adjust um, your watts. I'm sorry, your data series Y and X axis. All right, let's say I wanted less, higher or less granularity. I can round it, but I'm gonna demo that in one second. I'm gonna demo something else. So let's say now that I don't have the data in my legend, I wanna use annotation. So if I just select here and say, I want it up top right, only because it's a nice clean white spot at the moment. And if I select that, give it a second to think, you notice it put my average, I should go close, correct that. <laughs> but you notice it puts my average power up here, 157. And that's cool, I can see what it is up there. But maybe I actually want it associated with the line. So instead of top right, I'm gonna choose um, above right. And now you notice it kind of puts it in here. And that's why we give you top and above. You notice it kind of gets lost in here to some degree within the data. Ah, that doesn't look good. I'm gonna put it back to top right. So now I have the average power calculating and saving is you know the same way. So let's just say, all right, I want a little more data. So now I want cadence. Let's say I'm gonna use cadence. So I'm going to make it, I'm going to name it. I want cadence as a line. Um, I want to use a solid line, or maybe I want to use dotted line for cadence. I'm going to select the color. There's cadence, so I don't even need to think about it. I don't need any symbols. And let's just say in the expression box, all I need to type is cadence. Give it a second to think. It just wants to make sure you stop typing. And now you see cadence is there. So let's you know say, oh, you know what? I also want average cadence. So I'm gonna do the same process. I'm gonna type a VG this time, cadence. I'm gonna use a dashed line because I've been using dashes for my average. I'm gonna use my cadence color. So I'm gonna scroll through my selected colors, use cadence. And the same thing, I'm gonna start inside out. So first I say cadence, then I'm gonna put it, when you ever want the syntax to, you know, I'm gonna use cadence, put it in parentheses, and then I'm gonna put the word average ahead of it because that's what I want. Now, if you notice what's going on in the background, it's giving me the cadence line and an average cadence. I have now have two Y axis uh, indexes, and they're available to you, so you can see them. You know what, and I want to, um, I'm gonna go ahead and annotate this. I'm gonna use top right again, since it was there, and it'll go with my, and I'm gonna take it out of the legend, so that I don't have a junked up legend. Here I'm seeing the second by second data, here I'm seeing summary data. Now let's say, I, you know what, I really wanted to see cadence to a deeper level. What if I went and did that? I rounded it to 0 0.01. Now I could look at my average cadence is 67.26. Point, you know, so you have that ability. I would be careful of over precision there, but you certainly can set that up in any way you want. Now, once you're done, all you need to do is close your configuration box. You're finished and your chart is now available to you. It is saved in your My Charts automatically, so this chart would be available, your video test chart is available, and that is the basics of building charts. We're gonna obviously get more complex in some of these lessons, but that's the simplest starting point at a workout. Now, oops, I left my expression guide. The next lesson will be creating a data series at the athlete level. Thank you.